Hi, everyone. I'm Katherine Middleton, uh, and welcome to the Intro to React Hooks class here at F8. So I'm a software engineer and also a React lover here at Facebook. And I've been at Facebook for almost two years now, working on the Instagram web team. So anything Instagram.com related is me and my team. And we use React on Instagram web. So I get to use React and React hooks every single day. But before I get you all hooked on hooks, I'd love to know about all of you and your background and experience. So show of hands, how many of you use React or have any experience using React? Awesome, okay, that is so great. <laughs> Seems like everyone raised their hand, that's awesome. Because we only have 30 minutes in this talk, I won't be able to cover what React is or how React works, so I'm so happy to see all of you have React experience. And then show of hands, I'm just curious, how many of you have used hooks before? Cool, wow, that's awesome. So you're not expected to know hooks, this is an intro to hooks class, uh, but that's great to see that some of you have already used uh, hooks before. Oh, I need the clicker, here we go. So here is our agenda for today. Uh, first, I'm gonna walk you through the motivations behind hooks and why they're beneficial. Then I'm gonna go over some commonly used hooks as well as custom hooks. And then we'll have a live demo where I'll walk through these concepts through the demo. And for this demo portion, if you already are on your computers, feel free to use the link and uh, you'll have your own copy so you can code along with me. And if you don't have your laptops, you can also just sit there and watch me code live. Either way is totally fine. And then after the live demo, we'll, I'll provide some final takeaways as well as some resources for you all to use if you want to start using React hooks in your projects. So I'm sure you're all thinking, what is the big deal with React hooks? And why is everyone excited about them? What even is a hook? But before I go into what they are, I want to talk about some of the challenges that we're currently seeing with React and how hooks can help solve them. So with React, it's hard to reuse logic between components. React doesn't offer a way to attach reusable behavior to a component. So if you've worked with React for a while, you might be familiar with things like higher order components or render props that try to help solve this. But even using these patterns uh, require you to refactor your component, which can be tricky and also harder to follow. So we notice that React just needs a better way for sharing stateful logic. So how does Hooks aim to solve this? With Hooks, you can extract stateful logic from a component so it can be tested independently and reused. Hooks allow you to reuse that stateful logic without having to change your component hierarchy. And this makes it easy to share hooks among many components. So another challenge that we're seeing with React is that complex components become hard to understand. Each lifecycle method, and for those, for just reiteration, lifecycle method, that's all the methods with component did mount, component did update, anything with component in front of it. So each lifecycle method often contains a mix of unrelated logic. So for example, let's say that your component is doing some data fetching. And your method might, uh, and if we look at component did mount, uh, you'll have some data fetching there and also in component did update. And let's say that you also have event listeners also in that same component did mount method with some cleanup performed in component will amount. So mutually related code that gets split apart with these lifecycle methods, whereas completely unrelated code ends up combined in a single method and this makes it too easy to introduce bugs and also inconsistencies. And in many cases, it's not possible to break these components into smaller ones because the stateful logic is all over the place and it makes it a lot more difficult to test them. So hooks let you split your component into smaller functions based on which pieces are related rather than forcing a split on lifecycle methods. So we can separate your app's concerns based on logic versus which lifecycle method they belong to. So I'm gonna show you an illustration of this. On the left-hand side, I'm gonna show you a React class, and I don't want you to look at every single line of code. It's more there just to see a structure of a React class. So in our class, we have a constructor that sets up our initial state values. We have, uh, and we bind our event handlers. 
We also have lifecycle methods like component did mount, component did update, component will mount, and there's also some context too. So right now I just added some color to show which pieces of code are related to one another. So if we look at component did mount, you can see that two completely unrelated pieces of code are together in the same lifecycle method. And let's look at our hooks example. So again, don't look at every single line of code, it's more of just about the structure. And this renders the same thing as our React class. And we can see here that with hooks, we have all our code based on what's related versus which lifecycle method they belong to. OK, so I told you how hooks can help solve some of these React challenges. But I still haven't told you exactly what a hook is. So hooks are functions that give you React features like state and lifecycle methods without having to use classes. Hooks basically let you hook into React features. And now I'm going to go over some three commonly used hooks that developers are using today. So first we have our state hook. And we call this inside a function component to add some local state to it. React will then preserve the state between re-renders. So instead of creating a class and using this.state or this.setState, you can keep your functional component and add this state hook. We also have the context hook. So show of hands, how many of you have used context before? So it's okay if you haven't used it before, but if you have used context before, we have a hook for it. And it accepts a context object, so the value returned from react.createContext and returns the value for that context. So if you used it before, this hook lets you access the context and subscribe to it. Then we have the effect hook. And it adds the ability to perform side effects from a function component. Use effect is where we would replace our lifecycle methods like component to mount. So looking at these three hooks, are you noticing a trend with any of them? Feel free to yell it out if you, know, if you see what the similarities are here. So all of these hooks have the word use in front of them. So use state, use context, use effect. And this is not by coincidence. Uh, this convention is actually very important, and we'll get to that in, in the later. Uh, later on. So we also have custom hooks. So that means you can create your own hooks. And a custom hook is just a normal JavaScript function whose name starts with use and that may call other hooks inside of it. And when we want to share bet logic between two JavaScript functions, we extract it to a third function. Both components and hooks are functions, so this works for them too. And having use in front is very important because Without it, we wouldn't be able to automatically check for violations of rules of hooks because we couldn't tell if your function contains calls to hooks inside of it. So we're actually going to create our own custom hook as well in the demo, uh, which is a great transition into the demo. So if you are on your computers, uh, feel free go to this link right here, fb.me slash f8 dash react dash hooks demo. And this will take you to redirect you to a code sandbox link. So ha have anyone used code sandbox before? Nice, awesome. Yeah, so when you land on this uh, and you hit save, you'll, it'll, fork, it'll fork it so you have your very own copy for yours to keep. So don't feel like you're going to mess me up by going through this demo because I'm going to also be using this too. And uh, I think we're ready. Oh, yeah, OK. You're going to see my really long password. All right, so when you go to that link, it'll land you here to this page. Cool. So again, this is Code Sandbox, and I just created a React web application. And it's a really basic React application of a static to-do list that I created. And for our setup, let's just go over everything that's going on here. Um, we have our index.js file, which contains our main component here, our to-do app, which we render down here. And then we also have our index.html file and our package.json. So if you've used Code Sandbox before, you know when using a React web application, uh, it comes with React, React DOM, and React scripts already loaded in your dependencies. And I added Bootstrap and React Strap because if I didn't have that, 
my to-do list would look kind of ugly. And I know it's already ugly right now, but it, it would look even uglier without it. So thanks, Bootstrap. Uh, so looking at our index.js file, we're using a functional component here. To, and we have a static to-do list, our initial to-do list. And you can see that it's an array with just a bunch of strings inside of it. And then if we scroll down here, we have our header, we have a list group, and we're going through our initial to-do list and mapping over each of these items. So if you're not familiar with map, that's just looping through all of our items in our initial to-do list array. And then we just add each item to this list. And then we also have a form, and our form doesn't do anything right now, but our form contains our input and our button. So here's our input, and here's our button. And I have this input group because otherwise my uh, to-do list would look kind of ugly because the add button's at the bottom. We don't want that, so I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it to the right of it. Cool. So now that you know the setup, our to-do list doesn't actually do anything. If I were to type something new to do and hit enter, it would just refresh and not actually do anything. The only way to actually add a to-do item is if I were to go into my static list and uh, update, and that's not very <laughs> user-friendly. So we want to make sure that we can add a new to-do item using this input. So in order to do that, we need to keep track of the current input value and store it in our state if we want to add it to our to-do list. And before React hooks, if I wanted to use any state in my component to keep track of local values, I would need to refactor this into a class. But instead of doing that, I want to keep my to-do app as a functional component. So I'm going to use the React hook, use state, to keep track of the current to-do input value. So if you have the link, feel free to code along and do, do what I'm doing here, or you can just sit and watch. Either way is totally fine. So I'm importing use state from React. And use state, as we know before, is a hook. And we can see, because it has use in front of it, and we're also importing it from React. So let's go down to our functional component here. And I'm going to use our hook here, so use state. And use state gives us two variables, which we're using destructuring to pull out of, and we get to assign it our own names. So I'm going to type in our first item here, which is to do. And the first value that we get from use state uh, is the value of the state. So you can think of this as, if you're, right, if you're using classes, you can think of this as like this dot state dot and then the name of your state value. So I'm going to name this to do. And then the second item that we get from our use state hook is a function, which I'm going to call set to do because we're, this function is going to update our to do value. And use state also takes the initial value of uh, our to do item. And unlike with classes, the state doesn't have to be an object. Uh, we, can, we can keep a number or a string if that's all we need. So in this case, I'm going to use an uh, empty string because that we want to keep it as an empty string when we're, well, for our to-do input. Cool. So now that we have our state values, let's actually use them. So I'm going to update our input here with our state variable value, and we're going to use to-do. Notice how we're not doing this dot state to dot to do, we're just doing to do. And this is the value that we defined up here. And then I'm going to add an on change here, handle input change. And it's yelling at me because I didn't create this function yet. So I'm going to create this function and pass in the event. Cool. So now I'm going to use this function set to do to update our to do value with that current input that we're getting. So I'm going to use set to do, if I, oh, it automatic correctly, set to do with e.target.value. Cool. So to prove that we actually have the right value stored in our state with whatever we're writing in our input, I'm going to just change this item here for demo purposes to to do. And so it's going to be empty, and I expect to do to hold my current input value that I type in here. So let's see if this works. New to do. Cool. So yeah, we can see that to do is keeping track of our current input value. So I'm going to change this back to item here. Cool. So let's just quickly go over what we did before we move on. So we first imported use state 
from React. And this lets us keep local state in a functional component. So our still functional component. And inside our component, we declare a new state variable by calling the useState hook. And it returns a pair of values, which we give the names to. So I could also call this um, like item or set item. It's yelling at me because I'm not using it down here. But you can call it whatever you want here. And we initialize it to be an empty string uh, here because useState only takes one argument, which is that initial value. And then the second returned item is our function. And this, this lets us update our to-do uh, with, with the name. So I use set to-do. And if we scroll down here at our input, uh, when the user types something into our input, we use set to do with the new value with our event handler here. So we're using set to do. And React will then re-render our component and passing the new to do value to it. Cool. All right, so now that we have our current input value in our state, uh, what else will we need to keep track of within the state? So we need to keep track of our to-do list. So I'm going to use use state again. So let's create our use state here. And I'm going to call this to-do list and then set to-do list. And what's going to be our initial value here? Exactly. So someone mentioned empty array. So we can have an empty array because if we look at our initial to-do list, it's an empty array with a list of strings. But for demo purposes, I'm going to leave it as the initial to-do list. Cool. And is there anywhere else that I'm missing that I need to update? So I need to update this value here to use our state variable to-do list. Cool. And that is not spelled right, to-do list. Cool. So we have our current to-do value, and we have our to-do list. But our to-do app still doesn't update anything when we hit enter. New to-do. Uh, just refreshes, doesn't actually add anything. So what will we need to do to make sure that our to-do item gets added to the list? Set, yes, we need to call set to-do list. And to do that, I'm going to create an on submit, and then handle submit down here in our form. And it's going to yell at me again because I don't have this function created. And pass in the e. So I'm going to do e.prevent default so the form doesn't submit yet. Uh, cool, so we have access to our current to-do item, which is here. And we also have access to our to-do list. So I'm going to use set to-do list, like what we mentioned earlier, here. So set to-do list. And I'm using a spread operator to get the contents of our to-do list and then adding the to-do item at the end. Spread operator, get the contacts here, add to do, and a new array. So will this work? Let's see. Will this work? Almost. So we're missing one thing. And we want to make sure that we, uh, that we use set to do to update our to do state input back to an empty string. So I'm going to update this set to do back to an empty string. So new to do. I'm not very clever with my to-do item names, but so it works. Okay. So let's just, oh. Uh, so now we can successfully add items to our to-do list. But even though this is a really simple to-do list, we're missing a big point of to-do list functionality. Does anyone have any ideas what we're missing here? Exactly. I saw someone going like this. <laughs> we want to make sure that we can remove items from our to-do list, because what's the point of having a to-do list if we can't even remove the items? So let's add a close button to each of our list group items. So thank you, React Strap. I was able to just add a button right here. And then I'm going to add an on-click method. And here is where we're going to have a handle remove click. And I'm going to pass in the index, the index of our, uh, that we're getting here that's associated with, with each item. So I'm going to create this function, handle remove click. And handle remove click takes in a to do index. Cool. So now in our handle remove click method, what do we need to do here? I guess it's kind of obvious because we have the handle remove click. Uh, but we need to filter through our current list 
to-do list and update the state with our new list with the item removed. So I'm going to create a new to-do list here. New to-do list. And this is going to be with the item removed. So I'm going to use our to-do list state variable here. And I'm going to use filter to filter through our array. So if I our to-do index. Cool. So now we have a new array with that item removed. And I know this isn't probably the most efficient way to get a new array with item removed, but it's a demo and I don't really have that too many, many to-do items. So now I'm going to use set to-do list to update with our new to-do list here. Set to-do list oh, and new to-do list here. Cool. So I'm actually teaching intro to React hooks right now. So I'm going to remove it and it works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so now we have a functional and interactive to-do list using React hooks. And I want to point out here that we want to make sure that we only call hooks at the top level, right here. By following this rule that you only call hooks at the top level, you ensure that hooks are called in the same order each time a component renders. So that's what allows React to correctly preserve the state of hooks between multiple use state calls and also other hook calls. And you don't want to call hooks inside loops or conditions or nested functions. Cool. So let's update our to-do app component to use custom hooks. So I'm going to scroll down here. And as I mentioned earlier, custom hooks are just normal JavaScript functions. So function to do state. All right, so I just made an error here. Does anyone know what I'm missing? Use, exactly. I need to make sure I have use in front of my custom hook. And like I mentioned earlier, this convention is really important because we wouldn't be able to see if your custom function actually has hooks inside of it if it doesn't have the word use in front of it. So. I'm going to copy and paste all of our uh, state logic up here and put it down here. And then I'm going to return uh, the items that our component needs. So let's look at our component here. What do we want to return from our custom hook? We want to return our to-do list. We also want to return our to-do value. And we also have our event handler. So handle remove click, handle input change, and handle submit. So I'm going to return those items here. To do, to do list, handles input change, handle remove click, handle submit. And notice that we're not returning set to do or set to do list because our app doesn't actually need those values. These functions are just specific to updating our state values, which is already being done in our custom hook. So let's use our custom hook now. So I'm going to copy and paste this, go up here, and let's just remove all this. Okay, use to do, use to do state. Cool. So let's see if this works. New to do. Yeah, and it works. Cool. So now if someone were to use our to do app, they don't need to worry about looking at all of the state logic. They can just see, oh, here's our component. And if they want to, and here's our to-do and to-do list values and our event handlers. And if they actually want to go and see the logic that our state is using, they can go into our custom hook and see, oh, OK, here's what's going on. So I want to point out here that you don't have to create a custom hook every single time you have multiple hook calls. This is mostly for demo purposes. I want to show you how you can use custom hooks. Uh, and in practice, we usually use hooks when we want shared functionality with other components. So for example, like data fetching, or media queries, or debouncing, and so on. Um, so don't use custom hooks in every single function, unless you want to, but it's not necessarily recommended. Cool. So I actually created the same exact to-do list, the same exact app, but I did it without using React hooks. So let's compare the two. Let's compare the two patterns. And if you're on your computer right now, if you scroll all the way down in the demo, there's a link. So if you weren't able to type everything that I had, um, 
we ha I have a completed version of this exact demo. And then I also have the class example. And I'm going to also compare these two up here as well. So let's compare the two. So on the left-hand side is our class. And this is not using hooks. This is using class. And on the right-hand side is the demo that we just did. So we have our custom hook here. And we have, uh, and if you go to the class side, over here. And it's the same app, so I'm just gonna, I just like moved it over here. Uh, but it's there. Trust me, it's the same one. So let's compare the two. So I'm gonna scroll down here and look at our state logic. So the obvious point, left hand, it's a class. And we have a constructor where we are initializing our to do values and our to do list values. So if we compare it to using hooks and using the use state hook, here's where we have the empty string, empty string initial to-do list, initial to-do list. And we're also, for our class, we have to bind the event handlers. So when we use hooks, we actually don't need to do this, which is great. We don't even have to worry about this. Uh, and then if we look at our uh, event handlers, so handle input change, handle submit, handle remove click, you can see that it's pretty similar. Uh, but the differences are here is that we're calling this dot set state each time and updating the variables that we need to change. But on the hook side, we're using hooks that are associated with that state variable. So we're calling to do list, set to do, set to do list, and up here as well, set to do. And then if we scroll down here to back to our, and we scroll up for our hook side because we have those hook custom hooks, you can see that. Um, we're using this dot handle remove click, this dot state dot to do, and where it's here is just to do list, handle remove click, et cetera. Cool. So this concludes our demo portion. Uh, and the links that you have, and if you weren't able, if you didn't have your computer now, you can uh, use this, these links for future usage. Those links are yours to keep. So if you are really excited by hooks and you just want to go back and start using them, feel free to use that same link and play around with them there. So we can go back to the, uh, the slides. Cool. So some final takeaways. Uh, when using hooks, we want to make sure that we only call hooks at the top level. And by following this rule, you ensure that hooks are always called in the same order each time a component renders. So that's what allows React to correctly preserve the state of hooks between multiple state hook calls and only call hooks from React functions and custom hooks. Don't call them inside loops, conditions, or nested functions. And make sure to put the word use in front of custom hooks. This convention is very important. And without it, we wouldn't be able to automatically check for violations of rules because we couldn't tell if your function had hook calls within, inside of it. And there's also a linter as well. So if you forget to have the word use in your custom hook, and you start having hook calls in your custom uh, hook, there will be a linter that will remind you, like, hey, you have some uh, hook calls in your function. You might probably want to put the word use in front of your custom hook. And then the last point is that classes can work side by side with hooks and is backwards compatible. So you can use classes and hooks in the same project. And we don't, so if you are really, really inspired by this talk and now you're really hooked on hooks and you want to go back and rewrite all of your existing classes to use hooks, we do not recommend that, <laughs> uh, keep, unless you're already planning on rewriting them. But rather, if you're writing a new component, give hooks a try and see how it is if everyone on your team is on board. And if you saw this talk and you're like, ugh, hooks, they're not that great, uh, that's totally OK, because classes aren't going anywhere. They're here to stay. So you don't have to worry about uh, removing, there's no plans to remove classes. And here are some resources that you can use if you want to try out some other hooks. And there's also a FAQ page. So I know some of you have already had experience using React hooks. Um, but there's a lot of common questions that are answered about hooks in that FAQ page. It's really useful. And thank you all so much for coming and coding with me. I hope that you're all hooked on hooks. And I'll also be around afterwards if any of you have questions about hooks or anything else. All right, thank you so much.